Hey, hey, everybody, you are listening to Mental Fitness Matters. I am your host, Tracy Austin, and this show is designed to provide you with education, tips, strategies, and solutions to improving your mental health and mental fitness. And it is the third Thursday of the month, so you know we are hanging out with the Director of Communications for Professionals Beyond the Game, Miss Erica Singleton. How are you doing today? I am doing fantastic. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> um, Gentonio actually came up with, I'm the... Sh- Chief storyteller um, at I Professionals Beyond the Game. Yes, yes. and I think um, today's today's guest, today's subject matter, everything about it is near and dear to my heart. Um, you and I have talked numerous times. Our focus with Professionals Beyond the Game is to work with rising collegiate athletes to really see where their life is going to go beyond sports, because a lot of times people don't prepare uh, college athletes or sometimes even high school athletes for life beyond. Um, the field, yes. the court, the pool, the pitch, any any and all the above. Um, and so we've had so many different types of guests yeah. giving different types of stories. But I think the age group that we are trying to really focus on and give information to doesn't always feel a connection. Yeah. Um, everybody across the board that we've talked to has had a journey that included being able to either finish their career in sports or finish their schooling. Um, but today we're really we're really getting into the group that is currently having to deal with what's real. Um, and that is that not everybody gets to finish these days, that not every sports program is getting to uh, get funding anymore. Not every school has every program that they had. I could say 10 years ago, but really two years ago yeah. is where we are now. <laughs> yeah. And so... Um, There is someone in my life that I'm so excited um, to have on the show this morning, Um, Kyla Brown. Uh, Kyla was a freshman uh, D1 track and field athlete at Hartford University when COVID hit. Her freshman year of college was cut short, and it seemed as if everything she had worked hard for was going down the drain. Um, Though her studies were on the nursing field or in the nursing field, uh, and that at the time was in high demand, track was her number one priority. Um, So using fitness to cope with anxiety and mental health issues, she chose to depart from her college journey and create a path in the field she loved. Taking classes to become a certified personal trainer entrepreneur, she is the proud owner of Brown Girl Stride LLC. And so using her, her training, her experience as an opportunity to help the people in her community and change lives for the better on a daily basis. We are so excited to welcome Kyla Brown this morning. Hello. Good morning. Uh, I'm so excited. And on a personal note, I will admit that Kyla and I are family. Uh, her mother <laughs> is uh, probably my first best friend ever. Um, and I know this young lady from the day she took her first breath. But Amazing. truthfully, um, she is a shine bright athlete. Like yeah. This is exactly what we're trying to to promote and help, and that is somebody who took everything that she had been using as a uh, track and field athlete and and really as a student scholar to then turn around and and make a difference and shine bright on her own. So please, Kyla, tell us a little about your journey. Oh, (laughs) good morning again, everybody. So... Um, in 2019, I graduated high school. I had the dreams to be an RN. I went off to college in Connecticut, University of Hartford. I am a Dutchess County hurdle champion. So I love track and field, but hurdles is my number one thing. Um, COVID hit. I wasn't able to finish my spring semester of college. So I'm like, oh, the turn up semester that I've been waiting for got cut to it and I didn't get to do any track meets during the spring. So I'm like, wow, I just trained all my life to be a division one track athlete. And now everything is just messed up. COVID messed up everything. So I had to start looking at the bigger picture and thinking about doing stuff that I would love to do instead of just being stuck in the pandemic, stressed out, doing online learning. So I decided not to return back to school and continue doing 
things that I love to do, which is fitness and exercise daily. I love to exercise and I love to help other people. That's why I wanted to be a nurse in the first place. I love helping people. Everything about helping people just boosts my energy, boosts my mood, honestly. When I'm teaching somebody something, I feel so happy. I'm so grateful that I'm able to do that daily. So I started my fitness business, Brown Girl Stride, in like 2020. At first, I was so afraid, you know. My mom and dad both went to college. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to be the dropout. They're going to be so upset at me. I'm dropping out. I'm going to just be home doing nothing. And, you know, my mom wasn't going for that. So I just started taking my personal trainer certificate and I passed. I was like, wow. I should start my own business. So my last name is already Brown with an E. So I just thought about girl stride at the end because you should always just stride, stride to accomplish anything you want to do, no matter if it's school, no matter what you want to do, just always strive to be the best. So Brown Girl Stride is my business name. And I started it here in my hometown, Poughkeepsie, New York, at my high school track. So every day I was just outside. I started with zero clients and now I trained over 130 people. So I'm just so happy and grateful. It was a little bit rough at first, um, gaining my clientele and just being nervous about what everybody would think as a personal trainer. Like, Carla, you dropped out of school from being a nurse to a personal trainer. But honestly, they're both two things that I love doing. So I didn't take it as a loss, I'm sorry. It's all right, we make adjustments in so many different ways. Wow. I was going to say one of the things you brought up is really important because I think this is one of the things that um, really is part of the audience that we try to reach, which is those of us that did get to finish that had the experience. um, You know, we looked at it from the standpoint of everything that we loved about college. And we've been talking to all of the different students that we work with about college in different ways. And then you went and it wasn't going to be the same thing that everybody told you that it was going to be, you know, and so... How was how was that decision making process and even like talking to your classmates who did go back or your track, your track teammates who did go back? Like, how has that been for you guys? So um, speaking to the ones that did go back at first, I was so afraid to tell them I wasn't coming back because I grew to love my teammates on the team and they love me as well. So it's just like, well, Carly, you're not coming back. You only did one freshman year. So it was very nerve wracking to even tell them that I wasn't coming back. It was very nerve wracking to tell them I wasn't coming back. I'm so nervous. <laughs> it was, <laughs> you're doing amazing. <laughs> at the end of the day, I just had to make the decision that was best for me. I got a lot of harsh comments like, wow, that's not going to get you anywhere. And, uh, oh, you're probably not going to make money or probably this, probably that, or you should just stay in school, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, I'm just doing what's best for me and what I love to do. And school will always be there. I don't know if a few years down the line, I might go back and try to be a nurse. But for right now, I just love everything about being an entrepreneur. Um, versus going to school and there's nothing wrong with going to school because I did learn a lot from going to school but I definitely like being an entrepreneur entrepreneur a little bit better (laughs) right now during the COVID time at least I honestly struggled doing online learning so we went to remote learning and it was just like that's probably the number one issue as of why I had to just think of alternative options to not go back to school because me and online learning do not mix well at all. I have to be front and center, right in the teacher's face, <laughs> getting all the information. And if I couldn't be like that, I just would have been distracted. So I'm happy I didn't let my time go to waste and just sit there and do nothing. But I actually have a profitable business that I love. Yeah. And it, I want to say, Kyla, number one, it's so nice to meet you officially. And congratulations just on your spirit and your your courage, your courage to kind of step out and do something anyway. I've heard you say a couple times, you know, having some of that anxiety and being nervous about what parents might think, what their other teammates might think, but doing it anyway. Talk about that a little bit. How was that? How did that impact your mental health 
and how do you view mental fitness? Because you said a, a couple of great qualities and characteristics about just being courageous enough to say, you know what, I'm doing what I love, so I'm going to try it, pivot, and go for it. How did that impact your mental health, and how has it impacted your mental health? Your mental health? Um, honestly, my mental health has been perfect now that I'm actually doing something I love. When I was at school, I felt like my anxiety was at an all-time high. Um School was hard. School was hard for me, period. I have a 504, so usually I need some extra help with certain things. And transferring from a Poughkeepsie high school that I went to to going to a private college, it was definitely hard for me doing some things that I've never done at my high school. So my anxiety was at an all-time high, depression at an all-time high. I missed my mom. I was away from my family. I was struggling on my own. I was sick every day at college, literally so many different sicknesses. So my anxiety was at an all time high. I felt stressed out every day. But when I was on the track or when I was at practice, that's when I felt like my best self. So now that I stepped away from school and I'm really just focusing on me, yes, the anxiety is still there, but it's controlled because I exercise daily and I train people. So I feel like I'm at peace when I'm training. I have no anxiety, literally. Like I have anxiety every single day, but when I'm training people or when I'm just <laughs> exercising stuff, I have a clear head and a clear mind. And that's just what I feel like my best self, honestly. I love that. I love that. And I, I hear a reoccurring theme when we have guests on this show, when people are falling into what they love mm -hmm. and really tapping into the energy and feeling of what makes you feel good. Your mental health improves. Your overall performance improves. It's just overall good for your quality of life. So let's make sure we're listening to that Mental Fitness Matters community. If we're doing things, if we're stuck in places and spaces that are draining our energy, taking from us, making you feel more stressed, anxious, and depressed, you need to check that. Be mindful. Kyla, thank you for sharing and going in depth about some of those things that you were observing from a personal perspective, how that impacted you, but also now that you've pivoted and jumped into something that you love to do, how that's allowed you to fly. How that's allowed you to fly. That's a big deal. Yeah. Yes, I feel mental clarity. I feel way better. I don't feel stressed every day wondering how I'm going to pass this or how I'm going to do this homework. Like, uh, And it's not even about just doing the homework. It's just about everything that comes with being at school. Um, not just about the schoolwork or anything. It's just the social anxiety, all the kids that I don't know, the people that I don't know. It's just everything. But when I'm just doing something I love, that's just when I feel at peace. And I literally feel at peace every day I wake up, I'm happy. And if life is too short to be stressed, stressed and depressed every day or worrying, to worry is good. But to be constantly worrying every day and just having that ill feeling in your body every day, I'm so happy. I don't feel like that anymore. I honestly wake up smiling, happy, ready to see new clients, ready to go on to new business, uh, um, just new business ideas. Honestly, I love yeah. everything about being an entrepreneur. It makes me feel free. I love it. Wonderful. I was going to say one of the things I really enjoy about um, your Instagram account um, for Brown Girl Stride is that in, in addition to seeing familiar faces, because you have gotten people that I love who maybe haven't found um, their sport or their aerobic activity that they love. You've gotten them to take time and come out and work with you. But I also really love seeing the things that you do to continue to keep yourself um, challenged. You know, your your flexibility work, your all of that. It's, it's really encouraging from the standpoint of not just somebody who has always tried to challenge themselves just a little bit more in athletics, but also just in the way that you have taken on um, maybe even the mantle of keeping that next generation and the generation before you healthier, like really working. You've got clients that are, are young, young and clients that are older, older. Yeah. Yeah. You got a little bit of everything. So it's been really great being able to see that. Um, and for somebody who just talked about some of their social anxiety, how has it differed in bringing in clients that are people that you may not have known? 
it's honestly, I can say it's a totally different feeling. Like I always thought I had social anxiety, but then when it comes to like meeting a new client, the anxiety isn't there. Like, honestly, I'm just so excited to meet them. And I'm so happy that I honestly don't feel those same butterflies and nervous feeling that I would feel if I was walking into class or something. I just feel like, wow, I'm about to help them change their lives, get to their goals, we're about to work together. Honestly, we're going to be great. That's just how I feel. I feel happy and excited about everything with my clients and my business versus school. I don't want to keep putting school down because I, I shout out everyone who's going to college. It's very hard. So if you're in college and that's your passion and you know what you want to do, stay in college and stick with it. But if you want to try doing something else that you love, that will work out for you too. Yeah. You know? And what would you say as you're kind of speaking to that? Because you're, you're right. If you're in school and you're loving it, it's working for you, awesome. If it's not, thinking about something different, what advice would you give people that are kind of standing kind of where you are right now? Um, 21 years old, making a big decision for your career and your life. Um, if they're standing where you're standing right now, what would you say to them if they're faced with the same question or the same challenge of, what do I do with my life? COVID has impacted us in a way that everything that I thought about, dreamed about, looks a lot different. What should I do? it what can I do I would say go with your gut feeling and have a plan yes you can think about leaving school but what are you going to do when you leave school that's the thing you should always have a plan set up so you should know your next step but if you want to stay in school and you want to be a nurse a doctor a lawyer that's the type of people who want to stay in school if you know exactly what you want to do once I started being in school, I'm like, after the pandemic, I'm like, do I really want to be a nurse anymore in the middle of a <laughs> pandemic? Like, uh, I started getting scared. I'm like, oh, this COVID stuff. I don't want to be in the hospital during all this COVID stuff. So I honestly think um, you should just go with your gut feeling. If you're at school every day and you're just thinking, this is just not what I want to do you can do something else. It's just mm. that simple. Like, don't stay stuck in something that you don't want to be in because you're going to regret it every day of your life and say, wow, I just wasted four or six years of my life doing something that I didn't want to do. I did it for my family. I did it for my dad. Yes. It's just like, you have to do what works best for you. And whichever works best for you, if it's school, if it's business, if it's um, online courses, do what you what works best for you? If you honestly just think staying home and um, doing Zoom calls, I don't know. If that's like the best thing for you, then just do what makes you feel comfortable at peace. It's too, life is too short to be doing something that you don't want to or just to be stressed, depressed. I like think a lot of people worry about going to school just because of their family history. That was mainly, I wanted to go to school because I wanted to be a nurse, don't get me wrong. But also I'm like, my mom and dad went to school. So it's gonna look bad for me if I didn't go to school, but my mom and dad both support me with my business. So it just makes me feel a thousand percent better because they always have my back and they're like, you don't have to go to school. You can just do your business, but you should always have a plan. And that's just exactly what I've done. So I'm just grateful. I love it. And you you sound like somebody who's very um, aware, in a sense, from what it is that you wanted to do, what you wanted to be a part of. You said you love helping people. You love fitness, working out, being healthy. What types of um, innate qualities and characteristics have you noticed that have really shined through in this moment of pivoting and jumping into entrepreneurship? What parts of all the parts of who you are have really kind of come through right now for you? I see that I'm becoming more of an independent leader. Like I'm just becoming like all my leading qualities. Like every team that I've ever been on, I've been the captain. So I'm like, wow, is this showing me something? Like, yeah. ah, like I just see that I'm definitely a leader in the inside and I have to keep bringing it out more. My business is showing me different things about myself 
Yeah, and also shows me that I'm lazy sometimes because I could be working a little bit harder. So I'm like, okay, I see exactly what it is. It's not just I didn't want to do my schoolwork. Sometimes when it comes to business stuff, I'm a little bit lazy too. So I definitely see that. That's awesome. I appreciate on so many different levels the things that you brought up. I think um, as 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 a show, as yeah. the Shine Bright Athlete Series, you know, we looked at the purpose path and people really finding their purpose and moving in that direction. And the book itself really looks at somebody in their 40s or later who's looking back. But it's really nice to see somebody and be able to express it for themselves that your purpose is is there sometimes in the things that you love and the things that bring you joy. Mm -hmm. And that being able to make a plan, number one, and then step out on faith with either the support of your community or sometimes not even sure if you're going to get everybody's support. Like you weren't really sure what you were going to get from your teammates in terms of leaving. Because it is, it, it is hard to have a, a team put together, especially like track and field, um, where it's both individual and team oriented. And, and, a, and a relay team especially, you know, those parts are important. Um, but being able to step out and, and believe, I think that's important for a lot of people to hear. Yes. And that's what I love about track so much. It's just it's a team sport as well as it's just an independent sport. So track always taught me how to be independent because I did the hurdles. So I also ran on all the relay teams, but mostly I was just in the races alone. So I learned how to be alone and go hard. I did hurdles. So I learned that life is... Life is a race. If you ask me, you can be running and jumping right over those hurdles. You might fall, but you can get back up and keep going, honestly. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Kyla, before we, uh, before we wrap up, I do have to ask, um, make sure you give, uh, where can people find more about you and what you're doing with Brown Girl Stride? You guys can find me on Instagram at brown, B-R-O-W-N-E, girl stride underscore. i working on my social media. I love to get my following up. I post videos every day, majority of the time. I just love being my authentic self or just showing my clients. And I also want to give a big shout out to my community, Poughkeepsie. A lot of this wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for them. They supported me right off the bat, and I honestly love my city. I can't say any bad things about them. If it wasn't for my city, I wouldn't have any clientele. So I'm just so grateful for where I come from. And, yes, follow me on browngirlstride underscore on Instagram. YouTube coming soon. All right. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. You keep striding. Keep shining that light. Keep spreading that joy. Keep going no matter what. I mean, you are really taking your life in your hands and saying, why not me? Using all of who I am, all of who I'm called to be, and figuring it out along the way. And we can all take a message from that. You know, and one of the things that I heard her say when you brought up the purpose path, being able to ask ourselves the questions, you know, why am I doing what I'm doing? What, is, what does it mean for me? Is this what I want to be doing? You've done a great job just asking questions and really figuring out I don't have to necessarily do it this way. I can do it another way. So that's a big deal. Don't stop doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. We've talked about from the purpose path, am I running the right race? Yes. And uh, am I running it well if it is the right race? <laughs> and if it's not, you know, have I missed the pa the, the opportunity to get out of this race? Um, I think Kyla is right that, that there are hurdles and anybody who's ever tried to run the hurdles before has probably fallen at least once. <laughs> um, and it is fantastic to see somebody get back up and still finish a race and not only finish, but sometimes win it. Um, yeah. So it, it's yours. It's your race no matter what you choose to do with it. I am so excited excited and I would be remiss if I didn't say how very proud I am of you in your journey and what you've done and I haven't been to Poughkeepsie in a very long time but when I get there we have to do a session you have to work with me I can't wait I can't wait and will we get you out of Poughkeepsie and maybe working in some other cities yes going to North Carolina I would love to expand my clientele and multiple different states. I hope to one day have a BGS Brown Girl Stride location in several different states that I love. So yeah, we'll see that very soon. All right. We'll keep All looking right. forward for that. 
Tracy. Thank you so much for having me as a guest on your show. I love it. So we appreciate much. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And Erica, another amazing show with another amazing another guest. Year. Yeah, another year. Another show. Year, another show. <laughs> another opportunity. Another life and lives impacted. We can't thank you enough. I want my Mental Fitness Matters community to go out and shine bright like the stars that we are. We cannot wait to see you guys soon. Brown Girls Thrive.